Able's in on air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yachad, New York and New England, where everyone belongs. The Orthodox Union. The Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired. The Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. The Montpelier Sustainable Coalition. Abel Dinonair has been seen in the following publications. Parkchester Times. New York Parrot Online Newspaper. Muslim Community Report www.thisisthebronx.info and www.h.com Ableton On Air is a member of the National Academy for Television Arts and Sciences Boston, New England chapter. Welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Siler. Lauren Siler. Okay. Uh, before we get to our wonderful program today, we would like to thank uh, our wonderful sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and many others, including the partnership of the Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired and the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, along with um, other, other sponsors, such as the... Um, Muslim Media Corporation, Park Chester Times, uh, the Muslim Community Report, and um, the New York Parrot Online Newspaper, and many, 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 many others. Um, and we would like to thank Washington County Mental Health for our wonderful guest today, um, Zachary Hughes, who is, um, who is going to discuss his recent train um, trip to California and uh, do's and don'ts, do, do's and don'ts of accessible train travel. Welcome, uh, Zachary. Uh, Thank you, Hughes, Larry. To watch uh, to our uh, show, uh, Able to Know It. Um, so, can you explain a little bit about what you do? Um, yes, I am. Um, at Washington County Mental Health. I uh, am the assistant team leader at Maple House, and I do different peer projects uh, that they want me to do. Okay. What exactly is uh, Maple House? Maple House is a uh, peer crisis bed for our CSP population. They come in uh, when they need a rest or a break or... Uh, we sometimes also uh, take people who are in between housing. Okay, so what happened on your recent trip to California? And uh, You said it was a mixed bag of uh, problems or pros and cons. Right. So let's talk so, about that. So the um, trip was, um, was meant to be a vacation uh, for me. I haven't done it in six years. Um, and... Um, I just chose to uh, take uh, Amtrak out to California, um, took it right out of here, out of Montpelier, went down to Springfield, Mass., uh, stayed the night there, and then took the Lakeshore Limited, and then the California Zephyr. Um, and I... Um, well, but why three trains? One train doesn't no, go... No, one train does not go across uh, country right now. They don't have that ability. It all goes out of, my understanding, is the two hubs that goes out of are Chicago and New Orleans. So if you so you're gonna have to stop at one of those hubs before you uh, proceed across uh, country. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, Sunset Limited down in down in the south used to run from California to Florida, but mm -hmm. they had a few um, issues with tracks and stuff, so they're dealing with that. But mm -hmm. I took the Lakeshore Limited. 
are the Vermonter, the Lakeshore Limited, and the California Zapper. Mm -hmm. And uh, and this took a total of what, five days? Yeah, around there, three, I'd like to say around four days, somewhere in there. Yeah, it, it's, um, yeah, because you, you know, and it's very, um, the longest part of it was the California Zephyr, which was two days, just over two days. Okay. Uh, anything you want to ask, um, Arlie? How was it, <laughs> how was it uh, traveling on a train with a wheelchair? Uh, well... Okay. And you said it was a mixed bag, so and so ahead. it is. It is kind of a mixed bag, okay. But the wheelchair, um, the wheelchair gets. What happens is I can use the wheelchair, or I can sit in a seat for the seated portion of the train. When I'm in biz, I took business for that portion between uh, Springfield and Chicago, Vermont and Springfield. And then when I got to Chicago, I had a, I had a, a room. Mm -hmm. um, and I still had the ability to have the wheelchair. Now, when I got to Chicago, the room is on the lower level of the train. So, so explain. Yes. Uh, explain the train map for a second. So, because the train map is something like this. It's several cars, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it consists of coach and uh, coach cars and sleeping sleeper cars and a dining car and a cafe car and all that jazz mm -hmm. um and basically it's two levels in uh, you know and so there's you enter through the lower level and you go upstairs to the upper level if mm -hmm. you want to if your seats are up in there um that's where you go um mine my uh accommodations were on the lower level in one of the cars um and um the issue was is that that was frustrating was that I wasn't able to actually access the upper level if I wanted to where the activities were if you will like for instance the dining car was up there the cafe car was up there the the uh, observation car was up there um, so I was kind of down in the lower level all the time I was there and of course my attendant the Passengers are assigned attendants who are, who are in sleep who are in the sleeper um, accommodations. There's an attendant who sees to their needs, okay. and and the needs I had were just you know they had to bring down my meals um, or drink that I needed, um, and so that was kind of you know. So I was, they don't act like a, I'm. I'm just going to ask this question. The the attendant doesn't. They're not nursing staff. No, no. For... If you need that, then you need to bring your own person with you, uh, okay. which Amtrak um, offers a discount for that. So if you have a companion that needs to come along, they'll discount it. Okay. Um, now, now, one question I'm going to ask is, it says, there's a website that I pulled up, um, and, uh, you know, um, it's a www.wheelchairtravel.com dot org mm -hmm. uh, forward slash uh, railway travel. Yeah. So um, it says that train networks across the world, um, including Amtrak in the United States, can accommodate both manual uh, manual wheelchairs and power scooters. Right. But the issue is the gaps between the train. You know, when you, mm -hmm. when the train opens, you see that when gap there. Go out, yeah. Between the the uh, station platform, yes. so what they do is, according to the website, they put bridge plates or they mm -hmm. put ramps, ramps, so you can put it on your um, chair. But uh, I mean, on on the thing, so you can roll. Yeah. Right. Did you have any major problems with your chair? No problems. Huh? I had no problems. Getting okay. No. Okay. No. And um, as a general rule, I usually take my manual chair on trips. It's just easier if I need to um, get into a car. Okay. I could do that. If I had my scooter, my options are limited mm -hmm. almost immediately. Mm -hmm. um, but no one on the train gave you issues with the chair? Or... Nope. Okay. No problems with that. But how? But I think... I think How what's, was the mixed bag? I, I think what's don't... just really interesting is just the um, expect, 
you might expect something different than what happens once you get on the train. It really How so? well, it felt very alone down there mm -hmm. um, during the day. I made the best of it. Mm -hmm. I took pictures from different angles down in the down there. Um, I did. I didn't just stick in my room, no. but there was nothing. It just was like everybody was upstairs during the day and. Nobody hardly was down in that area. So it felt kind of like I had a little place to myself, but it felt really uh, alone down there. Um, and then- no one was really helping you? No, not really. I'd have to push a call button to get help if I needed oh, it. Oh, wow. So yeah. it's so it's one of those things where if you're expecting to be able to access these things, you might not be able to access these um, activities. So you couldn't ask the, I'm just, Okay. You couldn't ask the attendant. He said, I would like to go upstairs, please. Can you take me? They won't do that. They can't do that, no. Nope, they can't do they that because change, of the way. Change the rules so, what, <laughs> what they did tell me, because I asked, was they told me they are coming out with new trains. And I do believe that there are new cars. I just happen to be on an older car. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, that car was built right here in uh, Barrie, Vermont, at the Bombardier uh, plant. There's a nice plaque in the car that tells us that, so I showed that off to people up here. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I have to say they were wonderful people. Amtrak was very good people. and But there, there's room for improvement. There is always don't... room for improvement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you encounter no, your, your trip? Did you encounter uh, any issues um, because, you know, you were telling everybody, um, you know, that uh, you're having a good time, but you're disappointed. You were disappointed in certain things. When you got off the train, did you have any issues well, with um, traveling? I, you know, a little bit um, I did because I ended up getting into a... Um, well, I was smart about it. I actually took their subway system in San Francisco Ooh, okay. out to the airport. That was fine. I did that because I had a hotel out there. And, well, they had a courtesy shuttle that never showed up for me. So I I took what I thought was a taxi. Oh, that's a problem. Oh, yeah. That can be a problem. Yeah, well, it can be a problem because people actually pose at the airport as taxis. And, and they have, um, you know... They charge ridiculous rates to go two miles. Okay, so be careful with that. Always Do check. Do they give special rates for people with disabilities with um, traveling to um, large cities, do you think? Well, I think uh, Amtrak did discount me um, very well on my rates mm -hmm. um, for travel. Um, and, um, you know, so, I mean, sometimes you find good rates. Um, Sometimes you don't. Um, it depends on. Also, if your membership, if you're members of different places like AAA, or like um, AARP, if, AARP, which I'm not yet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and like uh, I was a member of a hotel um, chain, so um, their rewards program. So they tend to give you more uh, boost for that. I became a member of the American Airlines. Um, Advantage program, so because oh, then you took a train I back. Flew, uh, I mean, no, I took uh, a plane back. Plane back. And American was wonderful. Uh, I've heard oh, yeah. mixed stories about American. But but. I, think, I think they need to make trains more accessible for people with disabilities. That's well, my I opinion. hope they. Um, I hope they come out with new cars. They. I they, hope because they need to make them well, like a ramp or something or a lift. So it wasn't just being down there. So the other problem was is that there was no, um, like I thought I would be in an accessible room with a shower. That's what I thought based on what I'd seen on um, their promotions on YouTube. And I was But don't you have to request that? What's that? No, I, no. Exa I, example, we, my wife and I have been traveling to whole towns. Right. You, you, when you call for reservations, Mm -hmm. Can we have an accessible room, please? Right, which I did have, but it didn't, um, right. So yeah. what is your definition of accessible in this case? Accessible in this case? Mm -hmm. Okay, so accessible in this case would have been 
so that I could enjoy the same activities as the other people enjoy. Mm -hmm. That's my issue. It's not about it's not about being picky. It's about being. So it made you angry that you. I was down there alone. Uh, there was no way to. Um, there was no way to get up there without getting hurt. I don't. Um, you know. But they don't have a. So what is it? A wheelchair lift that brings you up there, or? There's nothing that'll bring me up there right now. You enter through the lower part of the train, the superliner. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it is. It's a design limitation, and I understand that, but it doesn't mean it didn't make me angry. It made me angry. I had to talk to a bunch of friends uh, to calm me down because I wasn't happy. Um, um, I made the best of it. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to see in the next few days, and maybe, you know, I said you're on my Facebook, you're going to see a bunch of pictures that I um, took of the trip. And it was um, a few of them that I provided you today show you where I was and um, where I spent most of my time. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, you know, people say, oh, you should have minded being alone. Well, you know, uh, as the conductor said, being on the train was about making friends. So maybe I wanted to make friends. And I couldn't really do that from my angle. Well, yeah, you, you, had, um, you had a couple of difficulties because you didn't want... It, it, was it because of corona? I'm going to ask you. Was it because of coronavirus that you didn't want people to sit next to you? Or, or? No, no, I don't have a problem with people sitting next to me. I had to sit next to people uh, on several legs of my trip. So it's not, you know, when I flew, I sat, had to sit next to people. So I don't have a problem with that. I, um, the other thing about Amtrak, which is a positive, mm -hmm. is they require you to wear a mask the entire time. Time, okay, so what about eating? You don't have to wear a mask. Just eat and drink, actively eating and drinking, then back up on your feet like this, you know. And that's what they did. And they were very cool about it. They were like, well, you know, they'd tell people on the intercom what was expected, and they said, well, we don't want to have to throw you out the window. So I thought that was, you know, yeah. nice way of putting it. But you know, they were very good about it. I, I think for me, if you want to ask about accessibility, it's about enjoying the activities. Mm -hmm. And it's about, um, and, and, and you know, that aside, everybody was very good with me. It wasn't like I was left there to suffer at all because no, I... No, not this, but I'm thinking because you said that you had to stick down there, but I'm sure staff was checking on you, they right? They did check on me, correct. Okay. So it wasn't like they abandoned me and I didn't yeah, have... Yeah, yeah. That's, that, today's topic, we don't want to uh, go off on that tangent. Right. Right. Yeah, I no, know. I'm not going... I wasn't planning to go off on a tangent. My, my take is about enjoying activities and being able to, um, to the best of their ability. And unfortunately, in this case, the design of the um, Superliner did not provide for that. It didn't ruin my trip. I had had very poor sleep in 24 hours prior to boarding California Zapper. So that actually didn't help that I didn't have sleep. And when I boarded and realized that I was going to be down in this, you know, spot, um, I was disappointed. That's how I described it, you know. And then the next morning, I made the best of it. And that's really important. And in mental health, uh, we call this what radical kind of California acceptance. California, were you? What part of California? Uh, San Francisco. San Francisco. But, but go ahead. But I was trying to... I have a cousin living there, yeah. Mm -hmm. go ahead. I was trying to point out radical acceptance, which is a form of mental health treatment called DBT. And that's when we radically accept our surroundings, our trip, our needs to um, deal with the situation in the moment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I... And, that's what I did, and what I ended up doing that first night out was uh, asking the attendant to turn down my bed, and um, which means what? Turn down the bed. Yeah. Means they open the, they change the seat over to a bed, and and they do that at night, and then during the day they fold it back up into a seat, and you sit in your seat, or whatever you want to do. Now I should point out real quick here that the cabins come with the one I stayed in had a bathroom, yeah, and had a curtain to divide it, had two seats um, facing each other, and uh, had, had temperature controls, and capable of two beds, 
mm -hmm. bunk bed style, but I didn't need the two beds. So, so we, what, the bathroom fit in one? Yeah, the bathroom's the on one side, the seating is on the other side. Mm -hmm. um, and then there is, you know, there's a hallway, sorry, mm -hmm. there's a hallway that, you know, goes to the stairs to go upstairs, and there's some bathrooms, because some of the rooms don't have you know, may have bathrooms, but people don't want to use their bathrooms in their rooms, so they may, they may go into these bathrooms. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but it, but that's basically what it is. It's and it's very nice, generally speaking. Um, you know, I think if I had been on a view liner, which is one one level train, I would have seen the accessibility. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think being on the super liner, it limits it right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's interesting having those feelings, just being very frustrated with it. I'm yeah, just telling you, I, know, I, know. I, I mean, <laughs> spend a thousand dollars here. So we're not wow. talking about, you know, that was part of my frustration. It was sort of like, I just spent a thousand dollars in my mind. Yeah. And then I radically yeah. accept the situation, take a bunch of pictures, kind of talk to people as we stop. Um, you know, because we stopped along the way, and we didn't have very much time to get off the train. You only mm. have like five minutes here and there, and they will leave you. So the so I didn't bother unloading off the train because it takes time to do that. They have to bring the ramp out and off the train. Instead, I stayed on the edge near the door to take in air. Mm. <laughs> uh, so it it was a good trip. Bless you. Mm -hmm. It was a great trip. It's better than Greyhound. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, no, you wouldn't recommend, uh, would you recommend a person in a wheelchair going on Greyhound on a long trip like that? Or? Absolutely not. Okay. Why? Um, so, sorry to uh, pros okay. and cons of Greyhound. That's fine. Uh, absolutely not. Um, or pros and cons to different there, types There's of pros and cons to that. Uh, you know, it's, How so? It's a long ride. Long rides. You don't really, you have to... You know, and you're in your seat most of that time. Whereas on Amtrak, you can get up and walk around. Uh, and now you transferred, so yeah. I mean, so you you transferred from your chair manual, yeah, mm -hmm, to the the train seat. And, yes, that's and, right. And that, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it was really good on the first leg of the trip. First leg was on a view liner. So, I mean, it was a lot easier, simpler, um, you know. And so, you know, view liners are on one level, so there's none of this, um, you know, and you can go interchangeably between. What I was impressed with is that they've made the cafe car and my area accessible. Meaning what I kind can, of food? You had have, you have good food out. All right, so, so the first night out, I had to have caffeine car food, cafe car food uh, out of Springfield. When I went to Springfield, Chicago, yeah. um, and, that, and I had a couple of hot dogs and uh, Sprite, I remember that. Beverages were complimentary in business, so I could have as many beverages as I wanted. Oh, wow. Uh, nice. In business. Cool. Mm -hmm. Now, if I had sta uh, taken a room in that site, you know, like I did in Chicago, they give you meals and beverages. Mm -hmm. So it's actually very cost effective. People are like, oh, it's $1,000, but actually it's cost effective because it's, you're in the train. It's self contained, um, yeah, if you will. Yeah. And you don't have to pay. For now, if you take coach on the train, you have to pay for everything. Um, I, and I, uh, but I like Amtrak. I and I, I'm still giving them feedback on my experience. It wasn't bad. I mean, as you point out, as I point out, the staff did not abandon me. So, you know, they were very helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, I had to change cabins because we had a plumbing issue in the car, uh, sometime in Nevada. Oh, wow. oh. So I had to change cabins, and they were very helpful about that. So what are some before before because we only have a couple minutes left. Of course. What 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 are some tips that you can offer? So, um, people who are traveling different types of travel for people with disabilities. So tips are to use the help that's offered. There's help services that are offered. Um, you can request them on the website or by calling the 800 numbers, which I don't have here in front of me right now, but they're different 800 numbers. Mm -hmm. And when you're making the reservations, make it clear whether you want help or not. 
so that they can help you. Even at the, you know, at the station or at the airport, they offer different things. Don't say, oh, I can't, I can do it because if, if anything, it's a lot easier to ask for help. Yeah, never be prideful, basically. Because um, I used to be, and it was a pain in the ass for me. Excuse my language. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, they do offer help. Use it. And also make sure to ask what kind of accommodations you can expect mm -hmm. so right. that yeah. it kind of prepares you. And do they, what type of discount right. do they give a person with a disability, a person with a special need? In a chair like yourself. Well, the uh, you know the, it varies. So the train does do that. Mm -hmm. The bus does not. Oh, um, okay. Okay. Just so you're aware of that the same thing with the airlines. Generally speaking, they don't discount it, but they offer the services. Mm -hmm. So they offer the special services that are required to get you on the aircraft to enjoy the activity to the extent possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. They they also obviously accept service animals. Just uh, oh, yeah, which good. I won't get into right now, but they do. I got I got to see uh, see a couple of service animals in my transit. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, All right. Anything else you want to say in did, reference did, to? Did you, did you survive the hills of San Francisco? Yeah. How was traveling within San Francisco? Um, it was with um, your chair. It's still a learning experience. It was okay. Because I didn't experience it's very, the hills. Very hilly, I know. Very, but very hilly. but it's hard to get around. Hilly. It can be hard getting around the city. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it's designed. You think you can get right over to the Golden Gate, but it takes a lot right. to do it. Right, so, right. Did you end up going on a cable car? No. What's that? No, no. I stayed very short, and I tell you why I stayed short this time was because um, there was wildfires, so smoke was spewing into oh, the city, wow. and so it actually caused my asthma to act up. Oh, and boy, I decided I to get home so as soon as possible. I know, I know. I know. And I'm yeah. glad to be back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, so, you so you didn't get the fisherman's walk? <laughs> no, I didn't get there this time, but I hope to next so time. Get, so basically, yeah. get the help you need. Get the help you need. Um, they do. What else? Yeah. Get the help that you need. Ask about the accommodations you're going to get so that you don't get in there and be like, oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. I can't access the upstairs. Mm. At least they'll be able to tell you so you know before you get on the train in Chicago and be like, mm -hmm. huh? So the whole trip was a, whole, was a week, pretty much. Pretty much. The entire trip, yes, it was a week. Yeah. Okay. So uh, for more information, um, uh, you want to give the website and the phone number to Washington County. I will do that. So, so for Washington County, you can call us at uh, two two nine zero five nine one if you're interested in services or whatever you need there, uh, mental health wise. Thanks. And uh, for more information on Washington County Mental Health's uh, website, you can go to www.wcmhs.org. That website again is www.wcmhs.org or 802-225-229, sorry, 229-0591. That's um, 802-229-0591. Um, we would like to thank um, Zachary Hughes of Washington County Mental Health uh, coming on today's show to talk about train travel and accessible travel. Uh, we would like to thank our guests, uh, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and also the partnership with the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, and many, many, many others, including um, the also the sponsorship of Muslim Media Corporation, uh, the uh, Protester Times Muslim Community Report, and the uh, New York Pirate Online Newspaper. Um, Tune in next time for another exciting edition of Able Dinner on Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. See you next time. Able Dinner on Air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air 
include Park Chester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yehad New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Montpelier Sustainable Coalition. Able Dinner Air has been seen in the following publications. Park Chester Times, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, and www.h.com. Able Dinner On Air is a member of the National Academy for Television Arts and Sciences Boston, New England, Chapter.